Hello everyone, I know I posted a video yesterday about, you know, something else, but today we're going to go over a farming spot. Uh, cloth farming for BOEs and another bunch of things you might like. I am on my Illidari. Uh, as you see, it's a special spec Illidari for speed, due to the fact that my mastery gives me movement speed. I have 72% mastery, I'm almost at 30% movement speed for bonus. Uh, that's going to go up as soon as I get more uh, better quality rolls on all my gear. I'll have mastery, mastery gear, and enchants, and my Heart of Azeroth's going to be a bit more powerful. It's capped at level 111, so that way I can use the Heart of Azeroth and the crafted gear. I'll go over this better if people want it, but we're going to go over the spot of farming BOEs, Nether Weave Cloth, and more importantly, these things for the Aldor rep, which is the Fell Armaments. Now, I farm a lot of these mainly for me and my girlfriend you've seen in the last video, but this is the spot where I farm them, and this is the fastest method to farm them with cloth and blue and purple BOEs included. I've gotten so many BOEs that I could sell. I have. And bags. I've made bags in my main, or my pal, and you've seen in other videos. So we're going to go over this real quick, and I will explain how this works. We're going to be running um, Shadow Labs, which you don't know where it is. It's just by Shatrath. You go from Shatrath City, Terracall Forest. You go into this area right down there, and it should be close to the corner. And I've already made a mistake, and it's on normal. You want to put it on heroic, because heroic means more drop rate. Or at least I find it affects the drop rate greatly. And you're probably thinking, you can only run heroic once a day. We're not killing any of the bosses. We're just running it for the trash pools alone, the first two rooms. Probably the fastest way to do it is the first two rooms. I mean, if you have other opinions, go ahead and voice them. But as for me personally, and what I found works the best, is pulling the trash mobs in the first room. Now, the trash mobs in this room uh, have a stun, so that's fairly annoying. But you can usually outrun them. So you just run up here, go around, make a loop. Try to pull them all. Uh, if you miss one or two mobs, you get them on the way back when you reset the dungeon. But the next room is where it's going to be more of a concern of how you pull them and where you pull them. Because in that room has a boss. And that boss will start the moment you kill all the trashes. Or trash mobs, I should say. And if you're too close to it, it might get a pull. And you have to run back to the entrance of the raid. Or the dungeon. And now that they are grouped up behind the wall, you LOS them, AoE, fell armament, and a bunch of grays. But in that pull alone, that was 21 cloth, plus an armament, which is pretty good. I'm ignoring that one until I get back there, because it's just more of an on-the-way-out kind of thing. And yes, you can also get the I have the 5 of Lunacy at the moment. Uh, if anyone wants that, you know, feel free to. If you're on Moonguard, it, NA, you know, I'll give it to you. I don't want it. I don't care for them. Uh, but you get a bunch of BOEs, a Conqueror set, for example, uh, this Elemental set, for example, the uh, thing. All right, this is the room we have to worry about. So that boss in the middle up there will spawn the moment all the cultists around the pillars are destroyed. If you pull him close enough to here, he will still aggro to you, because he walks down this way. So you want to pull them up over. Try to get a clip on this guy. You pull one mob from the pack, all of them will be pulled. And then you just LOS behind this corner, and you wait. Uh, the big dudes can fear, but I haven't found they do it enough for them to be a nuisance. So if they do fear you, just ignore it. No fell on movements there, but that's sad. I'll do two to three runs in this video to explain more things. Shadow Cancel Shoulders, if you're wondering where they get those, these drop a lot here. Uh, I've gotten the purple, not the purple, the blue version of the heirloom set. I've gotten the chest and I think the pants from this dungeon from killing these mobs a lot. I've also gotten the night blade, I think it's called. The purple dagger with the cool enchant looking. I've gotten that here too, and that sells on my server, I don't know, 2-3k almost. And I know you're probably thinking, that's not a lot, but it's just more of the speed at which you can do this. And the fast of my demon hunter to can do this with the mastery I've gotten to him. He's a fast boy. He's a really quick boy. And going over again, you just leave the dungeon. You reset all instances. It should reset this. Shadow Labs has been reset, and you just walk back in. Uh, the only sad thing is, it, I'm so f it's so fast that I get to the limit. So if you're willing to put, like, two to three characters uh, outside this for maximum farming, I mean, having tailoring would make the class drops increase more. I don't have tailoring on this character. I have uh, herbalism and skinning, because I'm doing another video on trying to get 
uh, prof two professions maxed before that, and I'm going to also do a video on getting a crafting profession maxed before level 112. Uh, that's going to still be leatherworking, because that's probably the easiest crafting profession to level. Um, but yeah, following that up, you just run this a bunch of times through another weave. Um, I mean, as I said, I've gotten four, it's already been 40. And I've already gotten, like, one run of 40, and I just made almost 150 netherweave bags. I mean, these sell for 16, but it's more of, you know, the quantity of which you can make them. I mean, everyone buys netherweave for, like, leveling alts and stuff. I mean, you, you see it all the time. You probably go to the auction house when you get, like, you know, 150 gold, and you go, like, oh, I'll just buy netherweave. And then, you know, you're set leveling for the entire day. That's it. That's all it is. There's some cool offense you get here, some greens. Some of the greens actually look pretty nice, like... The Tanto right there. I kind of like that look. There's a set that goes with it too that I don't have any pieces of at the moment. Uh, no, I don't. But like I said, Conqueror set, um, the blue, like, heirloom set you can get, the Nightblade, I've gotten that one once. Um, obviously, I used it because I didn't have it for myself, but as I said before, you can willingly sell that and be okay with the price you get for it. Again, they will still CC you. Um, well, at least they CC me, but I'm not really, I'm really okay with that. It just happens a lot. Well, that's the price you pay. Circle around. Now, killing one of the Felgars that are patrolling with a dash is fine. You gotta remember your dash does not hit people behind you. So you can just dash out. And then you LOS them behind this pillar. You can also go to the next room and grab them and pull, and you know, the, but that runs the risk of you running into that boss. And if you have to kill it, uh, that's kind of an issue. They get pulled a little weirdly, so I'm just gonna do a bit more LOSing. Killing. As soon as I'm out of the stun, they're dead. Pop them. Loot. There you go. Look, see? Cloth boots. I know some people probably like these boots. Uh, I know I was looking for these while. It's the Shadow Cancel set. That drops them here too, as you see at the shoulders as well. Full set of Shadow Cancels can drop them here as well. It's great. It's another another set that people tend to go for as well. But in two runs, you have 79 cloth, which is, you know, pretty much like your go-to thing. And these sell pretty much on the auction house as well. They're not soul bound, and you can vendor them for, you know, sell them for, like, you know, upwards of, you know, 2 to 3k for, for like, you know, 10 or 12. But if you want to, just lay them out one by one. Because people, like I said, use these for the Eldor. And it's a really fast way to get from uh, friendly to exalted for that tabard. Oh, and, and other things as well. And, you know, you should be really looking out for the fact that this is a fast farm. I've, I've seen people do this farm before. And the videos I watched were just telling you what the fell arguments were. And the one video I watched had really low quality. So whoever gave me that... Uh, you know, it gave me that uh, idea to make a video about this. Uh, I give you congratulations. But it's also stated that this is a very popular farming spot as well. But on the bright side, it, it, you're not contested like my other farming spots. Like the Freehold Farm, you can get contested pretty easily there. The Leather Farm, you can get contested there too because it's a high populated area. Here it's a dungeon. You just run this dungeon over and over and over again. You know, I'm going to try to make another dungeon for, you know... Wrath and such, because now with the new changes to how crafting professions work, you have to deal with the fact that you have to level up the expansion specific thing to get the expansion expansion specific specific thing you need I'm bad at English <laughs> but my uh, besides my dumb vocabulary aside uh, that's how it goes now you have to get the mats you need for that expansion if you want something from that expansion you can't just go and level something from something else and expect to get it you have to go do it yourself so if you need to tailor in BC Shadow Labs, run it fast. Uh, for Wrath, I don't know yet. I have to go through Wrath and figure out a good strategy. Although I'm pretty sure the fastest strategy I'm going to think of for Wrath is going to be just running ICC. So uh, if I'm wrong, I'll find something out for it. But until further notice, I think it's ICC. And it might also be Pit of Sauron. But a farming method for Pit of Sauron is also good for the Batter Tilt. But that's not you know the video I'm about today. So this is the third run. After this run, I'm going to end the video. But as I'm going to say, it's uh, you know a great farm. The Grey's vendor, you know, for like 1 to 2 gold, which, you know, eh, it's 1 to 2 gold, it's not that bad. But like, you're, more, you're more going after like the greens, the blues, the purples, the cloth, and the augments. Like, 
That, that's that's your main goal of this farm. The gra the grays don't even vendor for like jack shit. You can probably delete them if you wanted to, and you probably will still make profit on them. Like I said I I sent like eight stacks of two hundred cloth to my tailor, and he's currently he currently has like a bunch of bags just being sold. So. You know, with the prices of uh, Nether Weave, you can also do imbued Nether Weave too. But uh, that, to me, seems like a wholeheartedly waste of time because you're basically spending more mats than you're like actually worth spending. As you see, we also got the Eldrar, the stuff you probably get the questing in dungeons. But see, we just got another Conqueror's Breastplate. That is my fifth I've gotten, uh, not including the ones in inventory. Unfortunately, the augments don't drop 100% guaranteed, but this is the fastest way to do it. The most drop chance is actually the Relic Hunters up in Netherstorm, but I found those are really frustrating because if you don't um, get anything from them, you can just get them, and they don't give anything besides those. So that's my solo Nether Weave farming spot and some pros and cons to it. I hope to see you in the next video, and always, you know, keep farming.